and welcome to another 3ABN Today cooking program. We are the Mitchell Sisters. I'm Linda. I'm Brenda. And I'm Cinda. And we have an exciting program planned for you today. <laughs> One of my favorites, actually. Um, I love anything baked. And today, we are going to be um, cooking home-baked delights. Is that it? Well, honestly, just the name sounds wonderful. It, I know. It I mean, really there's does. There's something about home baked or homemade, something that you have created out of your kitchen. There's just something about it that just brings back flood of memories. Yes, they're very mm -hmm. warm to memories and then uh, it's it's all that smell that comes out of the oven and floods mm -hmm. through the whole house that just right. just tells your family you love them. Mm -hmm. Right then and there, it just it says, ooh, that you can just smell the love in the oven. And today, we're going to start off with um, some cookies. And before we, um, we start making the cookies, I'd like to show and tell them what, everything we're making. How about that? I think that's <laughs> a good idea. All right. Well, we're going to start off with those Craisin Raisin Oatmeal Cookies. And these are so, I think you're going to love um, knowing how easy they are to make. And uh, they come together so beautifully. Oh, and then butter pecan pie squares. Oh, now butter pecan is my favorite uh, pie, I think. One of my favorites, anyway. Well, and, pecan's and, your favorite nut. Yeah, so. so there you go. And then we're going to make some caramel sweet potato bread. Ooh. That looks really good, sis. I think that's mm -hmm. your recipe. It looks mm -hmm. wonderful. Melt in your mouth. And then we have peanut butter cranberry strudel. Now, you might be a little bit as a little bit of surprise in this recipe, ah, and it's delicious. <laughs> you got me curious on that one. Yeah. Oh, and oatmeal cream cookies. And you've got a little mm. something special in there, too. I, I can't go wrong with the oatmeal. And then we're going to end with the pecan pancake bake with caramelized apples. That sounds delicious, doesn't it? Well, so, it's got pecans in it again, so there you go. I know. I, I, I went all the way around. <laughs> And so we're going to get started with my uh, a Craisin Raisin Oatmeal Cookies, and let me read the recipe for you. You will need three-fourths cup of sugar, three-fourths cups of brown sugar, two-thirds cup of margarine, one teaspoon of vanilla, one-half teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of cornstarch, four tablespoons of water, one cup of white whole wheat flour, you will also need one half cup of unbleached all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, one half teaspoon of salt, two and a half cups of quick cooking oats, raw, one half cup of applesauce, one half cup of walnuts, and one half cup of craisins, one half cup golden raisins, one half cup of raisins, and one half teaspoon of cinnamon. And uh, I love cinnamon, too, so all that smell, you can almost imagine what that smell is coming out of the oven You know is. what? I love the name of this. I just think it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Craisin Raisin. <laughs> well, you got to have a little fun in the kitchen, right? Well, I thought, Cinda, since you are such a good mixer, um, we're, I'm going to ask her to do our hand mixing today. Now, this recipe, you can, uh, you can make it with a, a by hand, or you can... Um, Invite me over, and I can do it for yes, you. Yes, Cinda can do it for you, <laughs> or you can uh, use an electric mixer. But that electric mis mixer is kind of loud, so I thought today, why don't we just have Cinda, since she's here and she's got that real strong arm. Remember, I'm not the sister that, you know, works out. She is. So she's got that real strong arm, and we're just going to exercise that a little bit today. So and it's sis, like Grandma. Grandma always used that method. She yes, wouldn't she use did. any of those gadgets. So, sis, <laughs> we're going to put all our, basically, our sugars and all our wet ingredients mm -hmm. in there first. So, Linda, we can just... Uh, as you can tell, this is your softened margarine. Yeah, this is the smart balance. And, um, but you don't want it to be real hard. You want it a little soft because then yes. it blends better. That's right. So, there's we put the sugars in there. I'll have you put those over there, sis. All right. And we'll go ahead and put our applesauce in there, too, and that'll... Probably better get that out of the bowl. You know, speaking of applesauce, yes. Brenda gave me the best birthday present this year. Um, I was not home, and so I, Brenda and I usually always make applesauce together. Mm -hmm. And um, this year I was not home, and so I couldn't make it with her. So for my birthday, Brenda sent over like four cases of a lot of love made applesauce. <laughs> 
Well, you know, I want. Oh. I think the best gifts, don't you, sis, are, are the ones that you give from your heart. Oh, and you absolutely. Give your time. And um, I was wondering what in the world I could give her, and I wanted it to be special. And and you know, I don't, I don't really have a lot of time. And I thought, you know, she knows that, so I'm just going to give her some of my time. So. Not only that, oh man, I think about you every morning when I have that applesauce. Oh. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's so good. Babe, I Heart love you. Heart gifts good. are the best kind. And, and speaking of gifts, Linda just gave us a, an incredible gift. She gave us 50 pound bags of potatoes from Wisconsin. So thank you, Seth. So I, every time I fix my potatoes, I'm thinking of you. And you know what? Anytime you give me a potato, that's a gift because I love potatoes. Well, I figured if you each had 50 pounds, you could figure out what to do with it. And you're always having people over. So there you go. All right. Now we're going to just add, she's got, got all those blended up real nice in there, so now we're going to just put all the dry ingredients. And you don't have to have any certain order, you can just put all of them in all at once. And look at how, what a great job she's doing there. Here we've got the what. cinnamon going on there, and the salt, and I'm even going to give you the, the water now so that that goes in there. Oh, she's getting all of it in there, did you see that? Yeah. And. Our vanilla, put that in there. Vanilla just makes everything taste I better. I was just gonna say the same thing. I, do you like it when I give and you a little? Smell good. Don't you like it when you get a good tip somewhere? When you get a good cooking tip? Well, um, I have a really good cooking tip because some people have told me they say I could never make a cake. I don't have the right kind of oven, and it, and it, nothing works in there, and I can't. I just can't bake anything in my house, and so you know, just nothing ever turns out right for me. And so I want you know, I use those mixes, and I I don't have the same flavor of a homemade you know cake, but I just can't help it. I can't make anything. So you know what I tell you? I'll tell you this little bitty tip. Add a teaspoon of vanilla to a cake mix, and it will take that boxed taste out of it. And uh -huh. it's amazing. So a, a teaspoon of vanilla, put it in your cake mix, and nobody's going to know the difference. I promise. <laughs> well, that's really nice of you to give us all a tip. Well, I, hey, I like to give those <laughs> tips. Now here's, now the hard part's coming. She's got the oats going on in there now. And uh, we'll make it a little more challenging. And let's just, we're just going to dump these in. We got the craisins going on. We got Does the raisins. Does anybody know what craisins is? We got Maybe we should tell them. Craisins are dried cranberries. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right, so now we just. Well, we have a lot of goodness going on in here. We do. Would you like uh, your pan sprayed? Yes, would you spray, spray that for us over there? Okay. Uh, that, that direction would be I'll good. I'll spray like this way section. over there. That would be really yeah, good. I, I got it covered. <laughs> I got it covered. Okay, good. All right. And then, I don't know if you have one of these in your kitchen, but I highly recommend them. I love these. I, in fact, wow. Cindy and I were, were saying this morning, we don't really know exactly it's what... It's scoop number 20. This is scoop <laughs> 20. She, she's, a, she's actually worked in professional food service for large groups. And they have all these numbers. We were asking her, what did, what's the official name for this thing anyway? We well, just called it scoopers. You know, it's a scoop. That's and scoop number you, 20? This is scoop number 18. Ah, no. no. <laughs> if you look in this little thing that slides back and forth, then that will tell the number on it. So oh. when you're in the store, right. you can choose. I never knew that, but she's absolutely right. There's number 20 sitting right there. Mm -hmm. Who knew? Thanks, sis. Okay, so we're, I'm using a number 20 scoop, and I love these scoops for all, all drop oh, I cookies. Do too. I use these for everything. I use them for my um, so, veggie meatballs and everything. And veggie burgers. But, and I also wanted to just share this with you. If you uh, let this set in the refrigerator for just a, 30 minutes or so, um, it will firm up a little bit. But Because you the don't, oatmeal soaks the oats up. The oats soak yeah. up. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to. It, it'll still be fine, okay? It'll be just, it'll spread a little bit faster on your pan in the oven. But you're just going to put that scoop on there. And Linda, you're just going to flatten that down slightly. And, um, Is that slightly? A little bit more. Make it flatter. Yep, there you go. Okay. And so after you do that, you're just going to put those down. Good thing I washed my hands. Yes, I'm really thrilled about that, patty too. Patty cake, patty cake, baker, sister. <laughs> <laughs> flatten that cookie as fast as you can. <laughs> Okay, so it's just, you just flatten it down just slightly like that. And like I say, if you let it set in your refrigerator, it firms up and won't, uh, it probably would be a little better if you did that. 
but not critical. And so then you're going to bake this for at 350 degrees for 10 to 14 minutes until it's set and it's firm and it's golden on top. I underbake just slightly. I don't like to because then you have a nice moist cookie. And I that's another secret tip that to give you if you I want it nice and chewy and moist, underbake just slightly and let it cool on the on the hot pan when it first comes out of the oven. And you're going to have wonderful cookies. Here we have some right here ready to show you. And it's uh, um, already baked. And you can kind of get an idea from that um, how golden. It's still just, it's not crusty at all. They're underbaked just slightly and just a little bit golden. They look fabulous. And so, you know what? You know what would go good with that? Something that goes good with that that you're going to love. I know. Is my butter pecan squares. <laughs> <laughs> Let me read the recipe for you. For the crust, you will need one and a half cups of whole wheat flour, two-thirds cup of brown sugar, three-fourths cup of non-hydrogenated margarine, two teaspoons of kosher salt. Now for the filling, you will need one half cup of brown sugar, one-third cup of non-hydrogenated margarine, one half cup of honey, three tablespoons of almond milk, and three and a half cups of coarsely chopped pecans. Wow. Look at all these pecans. And yeah, I know. So I probably awesome. shouldn't have sent, set them right by her. That probably wasn't, I wasn't thinking. I love pecans. <laughs> I especially love um, the ones that you get from those Georgia pecans that are those nice big ones that, oh, they're so good. Well, they have them, for, they're good in Texas too. My, oh, Texas pecans are good too. Jim and I used to too. pick them up yes. in Texas. They just left them lay underneath trees and people would say, sure, come in and get them. And we would give them away as gifts. I know you, we probably gave them some to mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Yep, I love them. Oh, they were so good. Yeah. I wish they weren't so expensive, though. You know, I... I well, just plant yourself a tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're going to start with the crust. Sis, okay. if you want to spray that... All sides, too? Um, yes. Okay. And then I wanted to tell you, um, you have two choices here. There, I love that salted caramel taste, so I like to use the kosher salt. And I want to show you the difference between the kosher salt. Um, I'm going to show you, I don't, Summer, I don't know if you can get a, there you go. She's right on the ball there. Do um, you see the difference? The kosher salt is like a big chunky rock salt. So when you bite into these, um, you're going to get a little bit of salty flavor with the sweet flavor. Mm -hmm. If you don't like that, then you can just use just a touch. And I would only use like a teaspoon of the regular salt if you don't want to get that, that t flavor. Trust me, I like this. I like, I like I that. Like, it's, a, it's like a salty sweet taste. Yes, you know, the, yes. you know, so, so just I love warning it. you though, because um, I love it. If, if you're not if you're not, you know, don't like that salty sweet taste, just use the regular, okay? But we're going to go ahead and use an, an um, I'm not going to use all this, but we're going to go use um, the kosher salt just because I like that. Okay. And since you voted for it too, I voted we're going to go it. ahead yep, and do it. That's it. Okay, and we'll add our brown sugar. Mm -hmm. And then I like to use a pastry blender, and you can use a fork if you don't have that. But I just like this because it just does it so evenly. Mm -hmm. And you don't, without hardly any effort. And you can just blend this up. And then I cut in the margarine, mm -hmm. just like you would with a pie crust. I'd cut it in if it came out of the bowl. <laughs> there you go. And I just cut this in until it gets into, you want it to be um, just into small. Like pea -like. Pea even pieces. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Like I think you gotta have a little more of that salt. Really? I think it's got enough. <laughs> okay, just a pinch. I'm just really hard. I, I'm really wanting to just give it a pinch. Just a pinch. She's itching to do this. Let's just let her do it, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> we just made her day. <laughs> I'm gonna be sampling it and this program goes off the air, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, doing all this in the kitchen, and we've talked about it many times, um, mm -hmm. 
the importance that we have seen of our mom and how she had all of us around her in the kitchen and we'd all have our little bowls and things and make things well even now today that brings back memories I'll be making something and you know it's like a flashback yes mm -hmm. you know yes. To, to mom and and how patient she was and when I think of how much patience it took for like five little bowls of stuff you know yes or because even our brothers mom had out yes. there cooking oh, so yeah. it wasn't just the girl or even sometimes when she had one big bowl of teaching us to take turns it was always like a lesson along mm -hmm. with it yeah I had I had a few very painful lessons sometimes of if I wasn't sitting next to my littlest brother our littlest brother Kenny oh <laughs> he know, would add things going. to your to your recipe that you weren't probably expecting and I tell you what I had a little lesson in pride be with with Kenny helping me out with a, a cookie recipe I was standing next to him we all were making all our cookies and I was going to take him to the potluck Sabbath yeah instead of sugar he put um uh, he swapped it out for salt and they looked beautiful and and people were biting them through and spitting them out and i was like what happened to my cookies and then i tried them and i was so mad but you know what and then i you learned to forgive yes it was a lesson and, of and forgiveness he's an awesome cook to this day what yeah kenny an awesome, oh, cook. He's an awesome cook you know what i was thinking about too when you were saying that? this is so comfortable with all of us sitting here uh -huh. because we grew up in the kitchen together right but i remember another instance with salt uh -huh. and this is when the three of us were cooking and we got our cookies and we put them all on the cookie sheet <coughs> and we put them in the oven and they were in the they'd already been in the oven for like five minutes and one of us came by and i think it was probably me because i'm always sampling everything and i just went like this and i went these don't taste good. And and all of a sudden one of us goes, Oh, we forgot to put the salt in. <laughs> and and we forgot to put the sugar in. And we grabbed those cookies out of the oven after they were already partially baked, put them in the bowl, mashed them all up again, and put <laughs> in the sugar and the salt. Yeah, and you, that would happen here. And actually, you saw the sample, you never knew a thing. <laughs> it looks beautiful. Isn't that wonderful? God covers us. <laughs> no, we did that when we were little, too, though, because that I remember. That happened once here. I remember we made our brothers, we were like, they're, they're, they would eat anything. And they oh, were yeah. like, oh, these are really good. Yeah. yeah that <laughs> so happened. they were really twice baked cookies. So maybe we should come, maybe come up with a recipe. You but, know, where you put them in the oven, then you take them out halfway and then mix the more stuff in them. <laughs> Here's the lesson, though, that, that um, you can learn because some people, um, you know, say that uh, when they watch our programs, that they love how the recipes are all so easy. So many of you might feel like you can't cook or you can't do this or you can't do this. Let me tell you, we all make tons of mistakes. Trust me, I had a blunder last night. I had to redo a whole recipe. Well, you just do it again, That's you know? And the thing is, is that you keep trying. Not every re recipe has to be perfect. And when I try a new recipe out in my family, sometimes I get the two thumbs up and sometimes they say, you know what, this wasn't bad, but we'd rather not have it again. And so, you know what, guess what? They're not gonna get that recipe again, but you just keep trying, right, sister? That's right. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes, remember mom used to always tell us if we'd have a disaster, She'd say, it's okay, hon. She said, just take that disaster and create a new recipe. You know? <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> Actually, I've had some really good recipes happen because of some disasters or blunders. I know. You know that I was, it was those oops moment, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, shouldn't have done that. Okay, now what can I do? <laughs> and had some really good recipes turn out from that. Well, and on that note, you ask what can, now can you do? Oh, did you I ask that? Did you she, guys hear me ask that? I didn't that. hear me asking that. Now you could put that in uh -oh, there. Uh-oh, she's getting even. And she's going to pat this into okay. All of it the one. pan. Uh -huh. okay. And what we're going to do is, while she's patting that in the, ha in the pan, uh, Linda, you're going to start our filling. So go ahead and put in your um, soy margarine. And how, how much do you want this patted down? You want it Oh, no, firm? I want it patted down nice. Pat it, I know, but is that firmly nice or is that loosely nice? Um, you know, you don't have to do it real firm. Okay. And the, then the you honey? can just put, put in the honey. And you can, we can add the, um, now you can use, I use the almond milk. 
You can use. Um, I am really a big fan of almond milk. Now I hardly yeah, ever I, use soy milk. I like I used it to better soy than milk. the soy. Well, I, I love I, I almond milk. I can't eat a lot of soy, so um, that's why I like the almond milk better. And Would my you daughter like Katie actually got milk? me on the almond milk mm -hmm. and the almond milk. And you can use the original or the vanilla flavor with the almond milk. It does not matter. And what you're going to want to do is bring this to a boil. And then when you, um, you get it boiling, then you're going to add your chopped pecans. And then while, while you're doing the filling, you want to put this into the oven at 350 degrees for 15 minutes. And then you take it out of the oven and just let it sit until your filling is ready. And when you're um, filling, you, all you want to do with your filling is bring it to a boil and then turn it off, add your pecans, and then evenly pour it over your um, baked, this is partially baked crust, mm -hmm. and then put it back in the oven and bake it for another 15 to 20 minutes. And then this is what it looks like when it's finished. Isn't that beautiful? And that is good enough to eat, I'll tell you that. Woo! And you know, it, they're delicious. Mm -hmm. Well, sis, something else is delicious. What are you fixing for us next? Well, we're fixing caramel sweet potato bread. Ooh. And I'm going to ask Brenda to read the recipe. Okay. For this recipe, you'll need one cup of warm water, one fourth cup of honey, one fourth cup of pure maple syrup, one teaspoon of sea salt, one fourth cup of canola oil, one half cup of sweet potato that's been cooked and mashed, one tablespoon of instant dry active yeast, two cups of white flour, fine, two cups of unbleached flour, one fourth cup of honey, two tablespoons of soy margarine, and one tablespoon of cinnamon. Mm. Ooh, we got that cinnamon going on again, and that I love good. that. <laughs> I love sweet potatoes. And bread is so fun to make. Yes. I think it's probably one of my favorite things. And this just makes one loaf, so it makes it very, very easy for you to do. So um, let's get started. And you know what? <laughs> I love watching you make bread. <laughs> Linda has a really well, unique I love way of time making with bread, you too. and you're gonna you, you might need your earplugs. You are in for a treat. I'm just telling you. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I'm gonna put the water in, and mm -hmm. then um, the potatoes, and the sweet potatoes oh, that I have been cooked potatoes. and mashed. And sweet I potatoes do too. So and good for you. They come in all sizes. So would you mm -hmm. say a half a cup of what? What advice can you give for to get a half a cup of mashed sweet potatoes? Well, about a medium um, uh, sweet potato, I used um, about I used half of a medium sweet potato, about I, a half a cup. Okay. I say it doesn't matter because I'm going to eat the leftovers anyways. <laughs> so. Bake you That's up a true. big one. Uh, one of my favorite, I love sweet potatoes, and I think my very favorite part of a sweet potato is the skin. Well, I that, love that I love to this. dig out all the flesh of it and just eat that skin. That is such a treat. Oh, I it's love just, that too. Yeah. What the sweet mm. potato does in here, it makes it um, really moist, plus gives it a lot of good nutrition, but it, it makes it very moist. So to this um, water and the sweet potato, we're going to add our um, canola oil. And we're going to put our pure maple syrup. Do you want me, that, am I supposed to be doing anything over that's here? That's my fourth a cup over here. Okay. And um, yes, and just a little bit. That's you're going to uh, make something while we're doing the roll dough because you really oh, don't okay. have to have okay. it right now. All right. And then we're going to put some honey in it. And mm -hmm. um, we actually went and got this honey from. Um, uh, some beekeepers and they have a store out in front and it's the most unusual store I think I've ever seen and I'm just to stir this around and we, when you go into the store to get honey you just walk into the store go behind the counter mm -hmm. and, and you go behind the counter and you take out what you want and you write it on a piece of paper and laying right on top of the counter is bills and dollars and change and you just put your money right there um, and then you, you take what you want it's and the honor you, go, system. you go on your way it is the honor system and I have never seen anything like it and I guess they don't get anything stolen and, <laughs> you're, you're assuming yeah. <laughs> well, no, she and they and it's just it's just come in and help yourself and and I, I was like wow I mean 
it's going to be awesome in heaven, and I guess that's just a taste of it, you know, but it was awesome experience. In New England, they do that a lot, a lot of the farm stands that are on the side of the road. You'll see a lot of produce with just a little money box, and it's an honor system. You put your money in and take wow. the produce and go. And, and I talked with a farmer once at one of those uh, farm markets, and he said, you know, I very rarely have someone shortchange me. Most of the time, somebody puts in too much. And he said, like, a little extra tip is a thank you for even having the produce stand. He said, most people believe believe it or not, are honest. Isn't that good to know? That yes. is awesome. Mm -hmm. Can you know that, that honey is a natural sweetener that doesn't ever go bad? Yeah, it's true. Honey never goes bad. Well, here yeah. is um, some uh, unbleached white flour, and mm -hmm. I have the whole wheat um, flour, and it's, it's the fine and it's the white, whole mm -hmm. wheat white, and I put that in there, and I, dump, I dump about half and half, and then I sprinkle the yeast on top of that, and I should have already had the salt in now, it, so we'll put that down underneath. <laughs> so, Just slide it down there. Yep. Yeah. And um, I'll put the rest of that in, and we're just going to stir this up. Okay. Could you use the, I love, which is really popular here in the United States anyway right now, is the white whole wheat flour. Have you ever used? That's what this that's is. That's what she that's, just said that was. So I thought you said just whole wheat. So no, white. White, white whole wheat. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, for someone that didn't hear that like me. You might want to You know, you might want to remember her. White whole wheat flour. Well, she's it's a lighter. Grandma. What? She's a What'd you say? <laughs> she's a grandma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we better cut her some slack because she is a grandma, you know. I'm, I'm just feeble. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> grandmas are not feeble, let me tell you. I and these two grandmas can prove it. I had the sweetest experience with my grandson, Michael. He had me come to his class and talk about a trip that I had, had taken to Africa. And I had brought things in to show him, and I even brought some little gifts back from Africa to pass out to all his class. And the teacher introduced me as um, um, a boys and girls. We have Miss um, Brenda here today, and she is Michael's grandmother. And the kids looked at me, and they were smiling. I said hello, and, and all of a sudden, the one little boy raised, raised his hand to his teacher, and he said, she's a grandmother, where's her wrinkles? <laughs> He said, I don't believe you. And I was like, that's the best compliment ever. <laughs> Where's well, the wrinkles? What I'm doing now with the sweet uh, potato bread, I'm just working in the flour. Um, this is the step. You just slowly work in the flour. And sometimes you won't need all the flour that um, it ca this recipe calls for because depending on the um, flour. At this point, so I get my hands in there and just go for it. It's just about there. Yeah. But I'm just getting it a little oh, bit more. Oh, Brenda's okay. just itching to get. No, no, no. I, I think she's going to do it just right. I don't think I need to do that at all. Well, trust me, you all need to see Linda's technique of making bread because I love to just sit and okay, watch. Okay, we're just going to, and and you can slowly add this. And sis, okay. if, you wanna spray the, the if you want to spray that bread pan and slowly add that to the top. See how it's getting sticky? Just yeah, give me yes. a little bit more. And I'm going to keep working it in. Try to get most of it, not and on your I'm apron. And I'm pulling <laughs> it up towards me and pushing it back. Pulling towards, pushing back. Pulling towards, pushing back. And you just keep working in the flour like that. And you just keep working it in. Okay, a little bit more. Because you don't want your dough to be sticky. No. Well, yeah, but, it, it, but soft. This right, needs soft. to be soft. Because you can over flour your dough and then it becomes tough. Yeah. So you want to be careful. Okay, this can take if I'm gonna air on the a little bit more. If I'm gonna air, I air on the side of having it a little bit moist than And she's than right a with dry. bread, you this actually can be made into sweet rolls or bread, and we're actually gonna um, show you how I do this bread. I do it a little bit different, the sweet roll bread. Okay, a little bit more. All right. Now sis, mm -hmm. if you would um, spray an area on this counter for me. Let's see how I'll take, give you that. Okay. 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 You want any more flour? Floor. Let me see. I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. Um, now just um, hold your ears. <laughs> I told hey, you. I warned that. you. <laughs> and what this is doing um, is, is getting out all her frustrations. <laughs> that's what that's doing. <laughs> and now you all wondered why she's so sweet all the time. <laughs> and you just keep doing it and see how smooth it gets. It gets nice and smooth. And what you do, you want to put it in a bowl. And um, sis, if you would get me the one I have already done over there okay. and spray a little bit more here. 
Um, we're going to trade places because you'll put it in a warm place. And I'll take this one that we've already worked, and that one can go back. Okay. And now what we're going to do with this is you're going to treat it like a baby, just very gently. Just very gently pull it out. You want to hang on to that and very gently pull that and just pull it out like that. Okay. All right. Now, Brenda, if you mm -hmm. can put the uh, syrup in there and just a dash of the okay. margarine, just a dash and a dash of cinnamon. Okay. All right. And we will put some cinnamon here. And we'll some soy margarine. Yep. We'll spread that around. And sis, there should be some honey there. Is that honey? This is honey. Okay. We'll show you. This is very easy to okay, do. We'll do a real quick. Cinnamon in here. My husband will tell you that you Linda makes the best sweet rolls. Okay. Now we're just going to go like that. And I'm going to... And then we're going to put the honey. Mm, mm, mm. All right. And you spread your honey all around. This that good just honey looks good. that we got at you okay. know, you get Let me the farm. sprinkle the nuts now. No, that's no. for the top. Oh well. And um, then we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon over that. You can help me do that. Does this get thick? Yes. Okay. You uh, will bring the glaze to a boil, and um, when it starts to thicken, take it off right away. All right. I'll try to do that. Okay. Now what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna roll it up. Oh, and um, let's see if we can. Okay, sis, you want to roll that side up. And the tighter you roll it, the better. So roll it very, very tight. Keep rolling. And then when you get about to this much, pull it over like that. Just pull it over. And we're going to quickly, I got to get a knife. And I'll, you want to get the pan? Is the pan sprayed good? I can do that. Yes, ma'am. The pan now, is this is supposed to good. foam up like this. I just want to make sure I'm doing the right thing over here. Is this supposed to be foaming like that? Yes. Just make when sure. When it turns color and it'll start to slightly Yeah, hey, I don't want to ruin the recipe. And this here should fit. It'll fit like 10 rolls in. And actually, you can slice it and uh, it'll make great toast. It it's a, uh, makes mm. a great option for bread. Mm -hmm. And you just push that in there that in there so you're going to put them all tight together and um, this one here we'll just put on the top of something else because it doesn't matter like that and I'll put this in a warm place and cover it and let it rise up and you bake it 350 for uh, about 25 to 30 minutes and then you just pour this glaze on top and then sprinkle the nuts on and that's all you have to do and we have oh. some right here for you to see. Now mm -hmm. that looks delicious. And it slices nice. Now you could pull it apart and just have uh, have a section if you wanted or if you slice you it like, wanted, a, like but bread. I, we slice it like bread. It stays together nice and toast it and whatever. So. Oh, like mm. that. Okay, That's, what's next? That look well, good? it really does. Well, next is my peanut butter cranberry strudel. Let me read the recipe. For that, you will need one cup of dried cranberries, one fourth cup of boiling water, one fourth cup of applesauce, one cup of chunky peanut butter, two thirds cup of packed brown sugar, two cups of white whole wheat flour, one eight ounce container of tofuti cream cheese, one fourth cup of granulated sugar, one fourth cup of applesauce, two thirds cup of chunky peanut butter, one tablespoon of cornstarch, one tablespoon of lemon juice. I love cranberries um, an awful lot. I lived in New England, and uh, they're very famous for the cranberry bogs there. And I kind of use them interchangeably with raisins as well. You know, you can mm -hmm. use them, uh, anything you'd use a raisin, you could use a craisin or cranberry, dried cranberry. And I love peanut butter, so we're both going to like this recipe. A exactly. <laughs> And it's interesting how you can combine different flavors and things to come up with uh, something entirely mm -hmm. different you would have never thought of before. And uh, this recipe is actually um, going to be included in our new cookbook that we're working on that's coming out soon, uh, Family Favorites. And uh, so this is definitely already a family favorite. I'd like to um, ask my sister Cinda to help me and my sister Linda to help me. So they both have great mixing arms, you know. So. <laughs> See there, they they know, and so we're gonna hey, just. Hey, everybody needs a good workout in the kitchen. 
This recipe comes in two, uh, two parts. What we're going to do is we have a bottom crust, we have a middle filling, and then we have a top crust. Uh, that so, sounds like three to me. Well, except that the bottom crust is the same as the top. Uh -huh. We're just going to divide it in we're half. We're just dividing it. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So we're going to start with you with the, um, with the top and bottom crust. So you're going to start with the peanut butter. Mm -hmm. You put that in there and cream that in with the applesauce and the brown sugar. And while she's doing that, so you can just get that going over there. I'm going to actually get my other sister over on this side and to be starting with something over here so that this is how we can just keep, keep this process moving. All right. So over here, she's going to take um, the tofuti better than cream cheese. And that is a, a substitute. It's not a dairy product. It's a completely vegan product. But it is hey, a substitute me one for minute, cream cheese. Yes, ma'am. You want me to put all of this stuff in? At the same time, I, or am I waiting? You're, you're, you're creaming the sugars in first before you do uh, okay. anything else. Okay. Okay, so Just now. Just checking. Yeah, we know. That's, and also, that for the cream cheese, I mean, the, some people may not be able to find this. Yes. So if you live in a part of our country that, and we hear about this too, someone will tell me that, well, I'll get uh, not long ago uh, um, a letter from uh, in Zimbabwe, and they said, we can't get tofuti better than cream cheese. What can we do? And I say, use your regular cream cheese. You can use it um, cup for cup, exact Trying measurement, low, low fat, fat. Yeah. if you can, yeah. So that, but you use what you have. So if you yep. don't have this, then don't worry about it. It's not gonna, uh, it's gonna be just fine. So this, so now, yeah, yes, you're going to put your sugar in and cream that up first. So now I've got her. Now she's making the filling, Linda is. So she's creaming the tofuti better than cream cheese. And she is going to be mixing all that sugar in. Now you can opt to use a blender, an electric blender, if you want. And But look at, why do that when you've got, look at those arms going. Is that not beautiful rhythm right there going there? Both of them mixing at and the same time. this has benefits. Do, right you here. know, this has benefits. Yes, I mean. Don't mess with me. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> okay, I can keep and it. And tea is teasing, folks. <laughs> I, can I add? Okay, now you can add your, your um, uh, peanut butter. Okay. And your applesauce and basically everything else. So everything else, you'll need to scrape that out a little better. So everything else is going in there. Uh, it says you got to get that a little smoother. Oh, no. I take it all back. Ah! <laughs> That's pretty smooth, sis. It's pretty smooth. Okay. The, I want this to be a little bit crumbly. So you're going to just mix that, not till it's the, uh, um, you want it to still be a little crumbly. So you okay. don't want it to... I've got the peanut butter and the applesauce in. Do I put the lemon yep. juice? Yep. Uh huh. And we've got cornstarch going on in here. And okay. We're all that. And so actually, also you're not. Lemon you're not juice. careful. Oops. I don't want that. I want the lemon juice in the bowl. Okay. Yep. You're just kind of folding this in. Yeah, cutting it in too. You know, like so. Just go ahead and cut that in. And you can. Yes, that's beautiful. Now, while they're doing that. Uh, before I even started this recipe, and I had to redo, the, I had to do this one step for you. I have taken the craisins and I took them in the water that was in the recipe. You boil that water and put your craisins in there, bring it to boil, turn it off, and let it just set there for 20 minutes and it softens them. So look at this. So, you know, it's, it's real nice and soft, it's not dried. And I already did this step for you, so that because I know we didn't have 20 minutes to wait for this to, to happen. So this has already been done. This is what you're going to do when you start this recipe, though, is get your cranberries done. Do that first, so it's already setting there. And by the time you finish everything else, they'll be ready. Voila. Okay. There a little you go. bit more. No, a little, a little bit more. Little, yep, a little bit How's more. How's mine? Is mine smooth enough? Yours looks really good. That's awesome. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and put those craisins in here and let you go with that sis and let's see here that's looking pretty good that's just a touch more yes that's looking good you're wanting little chunks right yes just a little you don't want to mix this till it's like a batter you want it to be your I think that's really so good. honestly you wouldn't want to use electric mixer with this you can do it but you got to be really careful it's but electric be mixer is going to blend it okay, good you, you want to give me spatula? spray this okay, for me now I use the spring form pan which is the pan that the the sides can come across come off so when you're done you just take that off and you voila you've got your dish you don't have to do another thing and so she's got one right here and you, this has this little latch on it right here, and it just releases. flips off, releases, and, and then you can uh, take your sides off. All right, so here we're going. 
We're just going to take great job, sisters. I'm so proud of you. Didn't they do a good job? Let's okay. give us a hand. All right. What do you think? So I'm just going to divide half of that in here. And, um, and the other half, you're going to just, you can see how crumbly this mixture is. Can you see that? And um, so you're just going to keep moving it, moving it around until it just basically covers the bottom of your pan like this. Now, sis, that's a nine-inch pan, right? It is. They're, they come in. These springform pans come in all different sizes. You can even get, even get two-inch ones. Right. You know, right. they're tiny little ones. So, so sis, you're going to get. I'll let you go ahead, and um, um, we're going to pour this in here in just a second. So we're um, we're going to spread that around. Pat it down good, and when it gets all around like that, then, let's see, we're going to add this one. And why don't I have that spatula over there? I think we'll do that. All right. And then, here, you hold that. So then, we're going to spread this in here, the filling on top of this. And once we get that on there, then, sis, we can put on the rest of the topping at the, at the top. Spread oh. this around. Just like this, and to the sides like that. There we go. And then you just want to evenly place yep. this. Yeah, it's just like crumble it. You just crumble it over the top, and and uh, and you keep doing that. You're going to bake this after it's all you know even over the top in a 350 degree oven for about. Uh, 25 minutes until it's nice and golden and in fact we have one already prepared for you right over here just decorated it with a few more uh, uh, craisins and just it's a beautiful. sprinkle of powdered dust, sugar just a, just, dusting. A, just a dusting of powdered sugar on the top and uh, that is such a moist um, uh, when you cut into that it's very moist it's not a dry uh, strudel at all and I think you're really going to enjoy that oh that looks delicious <laughs> all right you know something else I think you'll enjoy is I'm going to make my oatmeal cream cookies. Let me read the recipe for you. You will need two and a half cups of chopped walnuts, three tablespoons of canola oil, one cup of dark brown sugar, one half cup of water, one teaspoon of pure almond extract, two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract, one and a half cups of oat flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, three-fourths teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and two cups of quick oats. And for the filling, you will need one half cup of vegan margarine, two and a half cups of powdered sugar, and one and a half to two teaspoons of almond extract. What I love about these cookies is they're really healthy. They're mm -hmm. heart healthy mm -hmm. because they're full of oats and walnuts Mm. Ooh, walnuts are really good, high in omega-3s. Mm-hmm. So this is a little bit different recipe. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do okay. is we're going to start with, um, you can use a food processor or um, a blender, okay. and you want to put your chopped walnuts in. What if you don't have either first? one? There you go. Uh, you might have, you'll, you'll just have to grind them really fine. Chop them more. So this is like a walnut meal. Well, kind of what we're making is almost a walnut. We're making a walnut butter. Oh, wow. So we're going to um, blend these up just a little bit. Okay. Like this. Right. Hold your ears. Oh, that actually is not too bad. Is no, it? not as bad. Okay. Not as bad and as I thought it would be. See how they're really, really fine. Then we're going to add our three tablespoons of canola oil. Did you notice how quickly that became the right consistency? It was just a tiny little jog, and that was right. it. Right. And what we're doing is we're actually going to—it's going to be like a butter. And you'll need to open it up and just get your spatula and put it down in there. Mm-hmm. And because you really want it to be smooth like a butter, and it really makes the cookies really moist. Kind of helps it to make, you know, to mix it up and make it like a peanut butter. Oh, there it goes. It takes just a minute, and you just got to be patient. See it going? There it's going. It's 
starting to take on. You can on. see the consistency down here changing from what's up here. Starting to take on more of a, like a peanut butter. We're making a walnut butter. That's right. Let's just mix it up just a little bit more. We're gonna push this down in because this top just needs to be a little bit more. Not much. Let's try this one. There we go. You can see that's it going starting, around. Right, that's starting to look good now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Looks more like a butter. Okay, when you yep. get it, when you get it really smooth like this. Now well, it's, it's going around. And you can actually see the change. Yep. Now, when you get it smooth like that, you'll take it out. And let's take this out. And you'll transfer it into a bowl. Now, while I'm doing, while I'm taking it and putting it into a bowl, sis, can mm -hmm. you take? You'll want to take. Um, your brown sugar okay. and your water, and I want you to bring that to a boil for me. Sure. Okay? I'll do it. And I, we like to take something like this and just spread it on our bread. Oh, now that's mm. a good idea, too. And sometimes add just a little bit of honey to it. Mm. Mm. Or maple syrup, pure maple syrup. Mmm. Mm. That sounds good. Um, these cookies, when you're finished with them, and you get them all put together, freeze really nice. So you might want to make a double batch. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't blend the walnuts. You know, I would do it, blend it in single batches if you're going to blend the walnuts, and then you mix your other ingredients into a double batch. Unless other, you have a great big unless you have a food big processor. food processor. Mm -hmm. that and some can people handle, do. Some people do. We have a big, huge one that I'm very thankful for. Um, our friends, uh, uh, Dick and Lucy Newharth, donated one for our story time because when all our kids, uh, all the people come for uh, Bible stories and they're all dressed in costumes and the incredible costumes that, are, that Lucy sews for them, well, it takes too long to uh, send them home and have their lunch break and get them back on the set. We waste a lot of time. So we feed all, if you come for story time, we're gonna feed your meal to, uh, for you. And uh, Dick and helps in the kitchen getting those. Mm -hmm. He donated this huge food processor, and him and Lucy did, and it makes a world of difference when you're cooking for a and large amount. And you know amount. the amazing thing is, is that um, uh, Mary Suko cooks for it. Oh, she's and an amazing. And she does so home style cooking. cooking yeah, too. none of this heat up so. and and, uh, and uh, warm up business. No, it's from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is that about boiling? Uh, uh, not quite. Almost. Uh, what do I do over here? Okay, while we're, while we're waiting for this to boil, you're going to be making the cream filling, which is um, a butter frosting. Um, so you're going to use your vegan um, margarine and put in your vanilla. I mean, uh, we're going to use almond extract for our frosting. So put the almond extract in and store it around. And then um, slowly start adding your powdered sugar. And then um, you can, that's boiling, so go ahead and put that in. Okay. And we're going to um, mix this up. And then, sis, mm -hmm. as soon as I get this, let me get this blended just a little bit. Okay. And um, then we'll add all our other ingredients to this. Okay. Can we talk them through for the sake of time? Because um, we have one, we, went on, we don't want to miss Linda's recipe that's coming that's up. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good recipe. Yeah. So go ahead, if you want to help me. Um, while Brenda's dumping everything in for us, I want to tell you that if you don't have oat flour, what we do is we just take quick oats and put it in a blender until you get a fine flour. Vanilla, too? Vanil we do vanilla, two teaspoons of vanilla, and one teaspoon of almond and then your salt. Okay, and then and your stir oats. that up. And then what I do is I don't have uh, the, oh, you get this blended up first, and after this is blended up, then just gently fold in the quick oats is what I use for this. And then I have a little tiny scoop, and I'm not sure what number it is, sis, but it's the <laughs> one inch, the little one inch scoop. And you take the little one inch scoop, 
spray your cookie sheet and put the little one inch scoop in and then just very gently you'll want to dip your fork in flour because it'll be sticky and just gently press down the cookie and you'll get um, perfect little two inch rounds when they're baked. It's about and, the size of one tablespoon. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, um, and then what you'll do is when they're baked, F, when they come out of the oven and after they've cooled, you put this cream frosting in between them. And I've got some already prepared for you. And somewhere I had my t a taster cookie. Right here, you get oh, the taste. Oh, look at this. <laughs> this is amazing, and they freeze so good. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. You're going to love these. Mmm. <laughs> Something else that you're going to love is Linda's Pecan Pancake Bake. All right. Brenda, would you read the recipe? I sure would. For this, you will need one cup of wheat flour, fine, one cup of unbleached flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, aluminum-free, three-fourths teaspoon of sea salt, one cup of soy milk, sweet, one half cup of canola oil, one half cup of pure maple syrup to go in the batter, one-fourth cup of chopped pecans, two teaspoons of vanilla, one medium apple peeled and sliced thin, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one half cup of pure maple syrup for the glaze, and one tablespoon of soy margarine. This is a, a breakfast idea if you'd like something different and you aren't standing at the stove frying all the pancakes. We're basically taking our pancake batter, putting, spraying a pan like this and putting it in it and then we're putting uh, sliced apples on top and a glaze. And Brenda's going to start the glaze which is the pure maple syrup. I put syrup. all of this in? Mm -hmm. Okay. Pure maple syrup and she is going to put the um, little dash of cinnamon, I guess I'll put that in for you. I love uh, you cinnamon. don't need as much cinnamon as it calls for. All right, yeah. here we go. We're going to put the, all the dry ingredients, the white wheat in it, the unbleached white flour. We're going to put the aluminum-free baking powder and the salt. And we're going to put the nuts, the chopped pecans. And you're going to mix this all up. Sis, you're doing a great job at slicing those apples. I'll tell you what. Stir it all around, and we are going to make a well in the middle of it. We're just mixing this all together, and we're going to make like a well in the middle, which a little hole right there in your dry ingredients. And we're going to put the canola oil and the soy milk. This is so pretty. It'd look. It'd be great for a brunch. And the mm -hmm. vanilla. And go. then that's all, and we're going to stir that up. And you okay. bring your yours is going to come to a boil, and you're going to stir it just till it slightly thickens. I'm trying not to watch because you know what they say: a watch pot never boils. So I'm looking over here, just thinking about you know. <laughs> And sometimes your flour may be a little bit um, different depending on the flours. So as you can see, that needs to change. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put just a little okay. bit more uh, liquid in it. And okay. all you have to do uh -huh. is put this in the pan. You're gonna put the sliced apples on top, pour the glaze on it, and we have one right here for you to see. Mm -hmm. And you just wow, serve that's it. Easy. Mm -hmm. You cut it in squares and serve it with maple syrup. So that it's very good. quick, very fast, very easy. Mm -hmm. Well, my sisters and I have uh, several cookbooks out, and uh, also if you'd like us to come to your um, church or your area for a cooking demo or a speaking engagement, uh, we're gonna show you right now how you can do that. If you've enjoyed the recipes you've seen today and would like to purchase your own copy of their cookbooks, including their new cookbook, Soups, Salads, and Sandwiches, you can write to 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896. That's 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896. You can call 618-627-4651. That's 618-627-4651. Or if you'd like to contact the Mitchiff Sisters for speaking appointments or concerts, you can do so at their website at mitchiffsisters.com. That's M-I-C-H-E-F-F sisters.com. Contact them today. They'd love to hear from you. 
Well, I hope you've had as much fun as we have preparing all these delicious recipes for you. We want to encourage you to, to try them. And, and if there's something in an ingredient that you don't um, particularly care for, like say you say, oh, I, don't, I just don't like cranberries, choose something else. Just don't nix the recipe. Try something else. Right. Substitute something that else that you would want in it. And one thing that I always encourage people to do is try a recipe the way it is first and see how you like it. Then you know how you want to tweak. At least you know how it's supposed to come out. Wouldn't you say, sis? <laughs> and I would say get your children in the kitchen with you Absolutely. and involve them into helping prepare the foods. That's right. Because they're your children, have wonderful your grandchildren. Memories. Yes, you're, you're not only giving them wonderful memories, you're, you're teaching them how to cook. And to, and to enjoy it. I have a friend that um, she has kids over her house. She doesn't uh, have any young children uh, anymore, but she, on Sunday afternoons, she'll take the kids in the church and she'll invite them over to come over for a cook-off at her house or a bake-off. And she'll have, and she's teaching these kids at church how to cook and bake. And that's something that she's just doing because God impressed her to do. And they love it. And these little ones are in really understanding uh, the joy of cooking. And, and you have and a sister that does that too. Because <laughs> I, lo I love to have kids over and teach them how to make bread and rolls and, and just have a lot of fun. It opens up a lot of conversation and, and it's, it's very, it's like the warmth of, of a family. Some of these kids in the, our church, they come from maybe divided homes. There's other kids, you know, in the neighborhood. They don't have a mom or dad that's home. They're always working. And it's awesome opportunities to make friends with the parents and, and to help them learn things. And I've also gone in to someone's friend's house and looked at the ingredients they had and helped them see what they could bake and how they could make it nice and special mm -hmm. for their family and how to also set a table. Mm -hmm. That's, but that's a right. lot, when you think of the things that we have made today, um, you can take any one of these and use them for gifts for someone that's else. Right. Yes, that's, that's true. That's right. Not just during the holiday season, but all year th long. You know, give a gift of love. You give a gift of your time. Give a gift of There's a home-baked like, item. Right. There's nothing like a home-baked item that says, I care about you. That's right. Well, let's take a look at all the uh, recipes that we've prepared today. We're starting off with my Craisin Raisin Oatmeal Cookies. Oh, and I love the name of and those. And they're nice and moist. And we have the Caramel Sweet Potato Bread. Mmm. I'm, I'm anxious to try that one. I liked how you cut it up and put it in the pan. And then we also have the pecan pancake bake. Oh, that looks good with those apples on top. And the oatmeal cream cookies. Ooh, I like that. That nice little cream surprise inside. And then you've got the peanut butter cranberry um, strudel. And nice That's and just moist. beautiful. <laughs> and just a little dusting of, uh, of powdered sugar on top just to top it off. Mm -hmm. Well, we sure enjoy spending this time with you. Yes. Until next time, we want to encourage you to invite someone over to your home. That's you know, right. open up your heart and your home. Until next time, may all, all your, your meals be seasoned, seasoned with, with God's, God's love. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>